All right, in this session, we're going to look at some insert applications, uh, just to kind of get a feel for how they work. Uh, a, a lot of the uh, a lot of the things that go on with the insert application is just going to be a matter of trying and testing and asking questions. Uh, really, what I want to do is just give a basic introduction to what they are and some of the things to play with. Uh, I'll probably come up with some kind of standard disclaimer in that when I am working, um, a lot of times I am going to type in macros. Uh, a macro is a uh, short string of characters that can represent, I, I don't know, look in the documentation, but uh, it can represent any command <coughs> that can be typed in. So for example, uh, if I want to do a, a zoom all, uh, we've got that mapped to the button A, so I hit A, enter, and it does a zoom all. Uh, there are going to be a lot of times when I just type a macro and the, uh, the, the character string that you see doesn't really make any sense. That's why uh, I'll try to point that out, but if, uh, if I forget uh, this, this is the disclaimer about uh, macros. Uh, so, w we've already started a VR session, got the graphics window up, got the, uh, the main window up. Um, let's just go ahead and open a VR file. Um, I know I've got a uh, VR file in the, the folder where I'm working called example.vr. And uh, I'm going to get to an area, uh, to a zoom window, to get to an area that is uh, sort of out in the middle of nowhere, because uh, I'm, I'm going to be digitizing, and I don't necessarily want to, uh, uh, to digitize in the, uh, the area where I may end up editing later and showing other functions. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off all the layers. Uh, we've got a macro off uh, that does that. It issues the command L-A-Y-O-F-F, -F, layer off, space, and uh, like 1 to 10,000, I think. Um, remember, the layers in VR are integers, but strings are attached to the integers uh, based on a config file. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty much used to just working with the numbers in most cases. Uh, we, we can get into that uh, at another point, but now let's just look at some basic insert applications. The very first one that we need to look at is insert line, I-N-S-L-I-N. We can get to that through the insert menu. I can type I-N-S-L-I-N, enter, and uh, it, it starts the function. So a couple of things to notice. Uh, down on the main window, this message area uh, towards the right, the smaller message area towards the right, the top one is the active application, the active function that is running. Uh, I will probably hit the following again, but uh, let's just go ahead and show it right now. Uh, if I say INSSYM, insert symbol, it's going to start the insert symbol function. Notice the key menu is the insert symbol key menu. And down here, if I look at these, uh, 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 these message areas, you'll see that INSSYM is on top. That is the active function. INSLIN is the next one on the stack of functions. This stack can be uh, long. I don't know how long. I typically, in the configuration, limit it to a reasonable number so that as things uh, things essentially fall off the stack as they get pushed down. I mean, if I set it to 15, I could start 15 commands. Each time I end a command, the one below it on the stack pops up however many are, are allowed. But um, while I am working, 
I almost always have two active applications at least because if I say swap it is going to put INSLIN on top, insert line, and now insert sim has been swapped. So those two functions are going to swap back and forth. Uh, I have a, uh, uh, a 20 button keypad, a 20 button USB keypad that is programmable and there are a few things that I have mapped to that. Uh, the numeric keys I mapped to that because it just gives me a nice big buttons um, that I can post anywhere on my desktop, that I can get to the uh, the number keys. Um, and those are the, uh, the number keys associated with this keypad. Uh, one of the things I put on there is swap, because I almost always have two functions running. Uh, if I hit the end command, INSYM is on top, insert symbol, I end that. And now I'm just back to insert line. So a little bit about running multiple features. So I can be working along in an area and see something that I forgot, issue the command to put in the thing that I noticed, digitize it, hit end, and go right back to where I was. Any function can be interrupted and restarted. So uh, as I am working until I hit end, the uh, insert function is active. I can run something else. I can come back to it. Um, there are super rare, so rare that I can't even think of them, instances where you might do something that conflicts, where you're working on something and try to act on the thing that you're working on. Um, I honestly can't even think of a uh, an example of that. So uh, let's just say that you can interrupt yourself do something, see something you forgot, do it, come back to what you're doing. All right, back to insert line, I-N-S-L-I-N. So as far as training and practicing, uh, a couple of key factors here. One, you just need to try the buttons. So I can see that button one on my number key dialog, button one is digitize a point. So on whatever my input device is or on my keyboard anytime I hit the button one I am going to get a vertex on that line. While I am digitizing uh, I see that there is a, um, a close command so if I hit button two it will automatically go back to the first point and digitize another point there. Notice that it did not end. Uh, it just closed it. Sometimes you want to close, you know, you start on something that you're going to continue, you go around, you close, and you keep on going. But what I want to do is, uh, I, that's the line that I want. So I am just going to say end that with button four. Uh, let's say that I am digitizing and I am inserting points and I hit a point that's wrong and I want to back up. Button three is going to back up in the points that have had been digitized and then I can start digitizing again. At any point I can say close. Uh, if I want to attach this line to another line. I would say button 5, attach. It's going to ask me to ID the line. I remember that I said off and I turned off all the layers. So that graphics is on the screen, but if I hit a replot, it doesn't show up because it is off. Um, I was digitizing in layer 70. I remember looking at that. So if I say lay on 70, now notice I'm doing this after I issued the attach command. So it's asking me to ID a line that I want to attach to, but I can't see a line because I turned it off. My bad. Let's go ahead and turn on layer 70. Now those lines are on. 
and it's still asking me to ID the line uh, and the, essentially a search point because what this will do when I get near the line and ID it, it will ID the line, uh, jump to the closest point to where the cursor was, show me a tentative attachment that I can, let's go back up here, accept or reject. Notice how the key dialog, the key num the number key dialog is context dependent. I am doing something that requires a tentative accept or reject. I am going to accept again with button one. You'll notice that the button one gets a lot of use and the most likely thing that you are going to do is very often mapped to button one. Now I'm back just in the uh, in the insert uh, and I can digitize points, I can back up. Um, I want to do an arc so an arc is always going to take the last two points in the buffer. So let's say I want to digitize an arc that is includes those two points. I hit button number six. It creates an arc. If I digitize one more point, it's going to take this point and the previous two create an arc. So for things like spirals, sometimes you can get away with just digitizing one point. All right. Now, if I hit back up, button three, back up, it's going to jump back through not the tentative displayed points, but the points that I actually digitized. So as I was doing this arc, I, oh, I didn't really want to do that. I hit a bad point. I hit arc. Um, so I can back up through the points that I actually digitized. When I've got what I want, I can hit button number four and end. And now that becomes a line. Previous video, we talked about key ins. Maybe I want one of these attributes to be a little bit different. Maybe I want the width to be wider, so I can say WID equals 5. So now the graphically displayed line width is going to be wider. So based on whatever the parameters are, and the width that is applied is a configurable parameter and is all it is also scale dependent so it's a little bonus content there not necessarily uh, insert line but um, all right so then when I am done uh, I'm not gonna go through all the keys well I should go through one I, I'm gonna do one more I am going to uh, digitize a line and I'm going to toggle snapping I'm gonna say now down here it shows me that at the very uh, in the main window in the top message area it says snap on so when I digitize it is going to based on my snap parameters show me a tentative snap that I can accept and then start digitizing and while I'm digitizing I can toggle snap on snap to a point and digitize and keep going and end and now I have got some lines. The topic of snapping, we will look at that at another point. It, uh, there's, there's quite a bit that goes on there. Uh, that really is a, a whole other topic. But let's go ahead and end the uh, insert line and actually, let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start that back up again because I want to uh, look at button number seven. Um, button number seven gives me opportunity to enter things like a coordinate, an azimuth, a bearing. Uh, uh, but what I want to look at here is 
if I hit button 7 twice, and I do this so often, when I'm in insert line, I basically just hit 7-7. Seven, seven. Because the, uh, the thing that I want to get to is uh, setting the conditions for digitizing the line. I'm not going to go through all of these, but there are a few that are relevant. Uh, when I am digitizing, uh, arc flags are codes on an individual point that represent uh, the end point, a center point, or a beginning point of a curb. Uh, there are some things about those that are, that are problematic. Uh, we typically add them because sometimes they're useful in editing but we do not use them in translation. We typically, we uh, essentially explode the curves when we translate. Uh, I, I did an attachment. Well, when I digitized the point and attached it to that line, where did the elevation come from? Well, there are some, there are some options. It can be the original cursor elevation. It can be an average of the two. If I say an average of the two, and I have what is called node when attaching, right? Node when attaching means that when I attached to that line, it also put a vertex on the original line. So there are two vertices there, one on each line. So that was add a node when attaching. If we have node when attaching, both lines, both um, points, one on each line, get this elevation. Either the, uh, the elevation where the cursor was originally, this would be an XYZ digitizer if I'm in 3D, it can average the two it can take from line 1, or it can take from line 2. Uh, line 1 here is, uh, you know, these are definitions, and I have to go back and look because I don't s change this very often, but essentially every time you see this, one of these means self. In other words, the line I am digitizing at the time, I think, is line 1. And the line that I am attaching to is line 2. So if I've got a line established that has good elevations, and I always want those elevations to hold, I would set this to from line 2. So think of line 1 as self, line 2 as other. So if I'm digitizing, the line being digitized is self, the line attaching to is other. Line 2 has a good elevation, we always want to draw for that. So all I have to do is get close, attach, and the uh, vertex is always going to come from that. Uh, we looked at node when attaching. Uh, when you back up, when you use the button 3, do you want the instrument, the 3D instrument, to also drive back along the line? Or do you want to stay where you are and just have the vertices that you are backing up disappear? Um, do you want to use spline smoothing when digitizing? Uh, and a lot of other things that um, I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, one that might be of interest is maximum segment length. Uh, and that means, all right, let's, uh, let's set this to 5. Uh, we did this in a previous video, but let's set this to 5. Uh, this is the Z source of any interpolated. Um, I am going to turn line points on using a macro LPON. Now I can see the line points of everything on the screen. So I'm going to digitize three points. 
end and you can see that segments were added based on max seg length and I believe the key in is max seg equals uh, all of those things can be put on keys or toolbars or in macros so if I might have a macro called SL and it takes an argument and I say SL0 segment length 0 it issues the command max seg so if that was correct and I saved this line now I do not get any, any intermediate vertexes so let's go ahead and end that um, I'm use the page up key to zoom out I am going to run a command called del win um, because I want to delete this window. It's a bunch of junk and I want to get rid of it and a fast way to get rid of it is to delete window. Um, again, we look at the key, the, the uh, menu key dialog and I can just digitize corners and that did what I wanted but I'm going to reject because um, I'm not sure what the parameters were set at. There are parameters. The only parameter on this one is would we want to delete out of every open workspace or just the current? We only have one. That's fine. Uh, just always a good idea while in training to check when you see a button 7, almost always button 7, that says parameters. See what is a possibility. So let's go ahead and delete window, and we're done with that. Now, just a uh, if I was training, let's go ahead and turn line points off, and um, I'm going to open an image. I also have an image called example dot tif here. And I can, or maybe I don't. All right, apparently that path is different than I was expecting. So I'm going to look at where it was, and I'm going to say open image and give it a full path. All right, and it opened an image, and it zoomed out to uh, the extents of that image. Uh, if I had an area where I wanted to be working, and it did something like this, and I didn't like what it did, I can say zoom previous, or there's a shortcut, zoom, Z-O-O-P, and it will zoom previous, or I can say I have a macro A for zoom all. I have a macro um, ZP for zoom previous. So most of our macros cut everything down to one or two keys. Um, on my keyboard, I'm going to hit the home key to uh, just kind of move around a little bit and get in here and zoom in. And let's go ahead and digitize some lines. Uh, this is training. Nothing matters. I'm just going to give some examples. So I'm going to say INS LIN and um, I've got a, a scratch layer 600. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, at some point I will be using function keys to start everything. Uh, I'm going to use some uh, just some basic commands for now. Uh, just to kind of keep that idea of key ends and macros in front of us. Um, let's go ahead and, and set the width to 5. I've got macros for widths. I think everything from W1 to W10 um, to, you know, set widths. So let's just go up to, uh, to this road, and we're going to digitize uh, the, uh, the, the seam 
between the asphalt and the curb. So we're going to uh, just digitize some points. So button one, button one. Uh, let's go ahead and do uh, get into this curve here and hit an arc. So we can see uh, that arc was created. It's not quite as easy to see uh, with the image on, but we're going to hit arc again there. Uh, we're going to see. Oh, there's you know we can go quite a ways without uh, without having to worry about things. Uh, and we're going to get into this uh, curb down in the lower left. And hit button six. Maybe I want to recenter it. Hit the home key. Keep digitizing. Maybe I want to zoom previous back up uh, to where I was. Maybe I just want to store it and see what we have got there. So now we have got a line based on the things that I keyed in. Uh, an example of attaching, uh, you know, might be maybe uh, I'm going to. Um, uh, you know, digitize some sort of a, uh, a property line that uh, you know we want to we want to um, attach to that. So I'm going to say button five, and there again, I got caught with the uh, with my layers off because I noticed that when I went to attach, there was nothing for it to attach to. So let's turn on layer 600, and let's go to attach. There is my tentative attachment, and then I can just digitize and hit end, and those are insert lines. Um, the a lot of the other insert functions, um, and I'm going to go ahead and undo. To undo um, okay I said undo two and for some reason it didn't undo this line and I'm not sure I'd have to under but then I said undo again and it undid my delete window see those things pop back up so I am going to redo one so that last thing that got undone redo it and uh, why that 600 isn't in the undo buffer uh, I'm not positive so I'm just gonna have to forget not to worry about that um, but if I want to delete it I can do a fast delete or opportunity to look at a, uh, a function so if I start fast delete, F-A-S-D-E-L, we have it mapped to the macro D. Um, so and a couple of good examples of things that are going on. Always notice the uh, key num dialog box. I can ID an entity. If I look down in this message area, it is searching for symbols. This is a way of filtering. It's a very handy way of filtering, and I get used to toggling through. So if I want to search for points or text or lines or symbols, um, I can also, so that's using the button to cycle through entity types. I want to do a line, so I can cycle through till it says line. I can say delete, ID the entity, either accept or I'm going to hit button to reject. Because I can individually turn on, watch the message area down here, I can turn on um, using uh, the buttons, like button 5 turns on symbols, button 6 turns on text, button 7 turns on points, and that doesn't actually turn them on, it toggles them. So let's go ahead and do number 6, toggle text toggle points. So now, based on my cursor position, it would either delete lines or symbols, whichever I am closer to. So, 
it's going to search for lines and symbols. If I hit uh, up here, button number one is ID and entity. So I'm going to get near the entity, hit button number one, tentatively showing me what's going to be deleted. That's good. And uh, I know why that uh, there were two there were two lines there. And that has to do with attaching and uh, abandoning a line. There is there is some weird configuration that if I am attaching to a line and start another function and do the function and come back there's a there's a sequence of keys where that line can be duplicated and that is a bug that I need to go uh, back and go back into the uh, the tracker and see where that is because there's only certain things that cause that and essentially I think they have to find everything that can cause it um, s some have been fixed and some haven't but so I did a I did a fast delete and I deleted that line and when I refreshed it it was still there because there were two lines so yeah there's a little bit of inside baseball uh, most of the insert function videos won't take this long but there were a lot of other topics there that were introduced because as we're you know, as we're going along you know, things uh, things happen things pop up and just like when we're working need to do something else need to come back need to undo something need to redo something need to change something need to edit something um, it's good to get a feel for how the commands interact with each other while uh, while we are working <laughs>